conceptual. Let me get the page back up here. Okay, so we were on page 26, um, but it's, it's recurring for each standard. And um, we put it as the, let's see, the conceptual knowledge was in the clarification, which was most, uh, most similar to the progression documents that tell us the conceptual threading. Okay. What about the procedural? Uh, procedural came from the examples after that. So it's not specifically saying in words what will happen, but you can see with numbers what types of procedures and problems students need to complete. And then the factual knowledge came from the essential skills and also the core standard itself. What? The factual, procedure, and conceptual, why is that important that a teacher knows that you're, you're doing that in your collaborative planning? Why are why those three pieces important? Because it's a part of this collaborative planning document. Why do, why do we want to talk about those three when we're planning? Can't hear you. Oh, come on, you guys. They're all related together, and you have to look at the global picture and how each of those feed into each other in order to help the student be successful and how you're going to pace it so that you're uh, meeting all of those needs. Okay. We need to know the how yeah. and get the kids to get to the point of the how. How would that student do on the types of assessments? That they only knew how to solve procedural type problems, algorithms. Where would that leave the student? <laughs> so, for the second part, you're going to work with a yellow sample lesson plan. You're going to take the same activity sheet. And this time, you're going to be identifying which part of the E in that lesson template where you find, where, where would you find those same components. Okay, good. All right, good. 
great. All right, let's go to students, student real statements. That's nothing but our what? And which E? Good. What about the lesson title and topic? Page one. The intro, the header. Okay, that's where you find your title in that document. What about enduring understanding? Elaboration. Ten thousand throughout. I'm gonna put a star by it. Okay. What did you say? Engagement. An engagement. Elaboration. Okay. Because when we did this with the principal before, they said we can't find enduring understanding because you can't find you didn't see the word enduring understanding. So what? So what are we talking about? We talk about enduring understanding. Okay, the big idea. What is it that we want kids to be able to learn from me? Okay, essential questions. Any, any other place? Exploration. And the exploration as well, okay? What about prior knowledge? Engagement. What about your key vocabulary? Explanation. Explanation. Very good. Right. Uh, Pre-post formative assessments. Right. What did you say? It should be evident in all E's. Yes. Very good. What about on the back mathematical practices? Okay, that's your notes where you identify. Okay, what about your factual knowledge? Uh, what about conceptual knowledge? Where? Where? Conceptual definitely should be where? Exploration. That's where they build. That's where that conceptual piece should be building right there. What about procedural knowledge? Procedural knowledge, usually going through your steps. Explanation. All right. Okay. And what happens when you're looking at that five with that FFT document? Um, because you're trying to follow those blocks, sometimes it's kind of hard to pull them in there, but you do the best you can to make sure you put it under E, because what you'll find sometimes it may be evident in a couple of E's. Okay? What about um, UDL? Wow. Okay, is that new for uh, FFT lesson planning no. document? It's new for the document, for the exemplar, because we didn't ask teachers to do that last year, right? We kind of started having the dialogue and conversations about UDL, so now it needs to be evident in your document, okay? Common misconception. Where do you, where, where do you, it can be an explanation, where else can you find it? Well, you to do, an elaboration, that's where you definitely want to clear up those common misconceptions. What about um, resources and materials? Throughout. Throughout. Evident in all E, okay? And what about extended activities and instructional strategies? Elaboration. How about engagement? Elaboration. Okay. What about um, FFT five on the reflection? Okay. Usually, for, I'm gonna go back to remember the, the remember the curriculum. I mean, the <coughs> collaborative plan and document is teacher. It's a teacher tool. So where would the teacher reflection it will be? Yes. So let's go back to the curriculum yeah. document. When you was looking at the curriculum document, I heard over here, I heard you say okay. the reflections was on this page. Who were those reflections for? The students. That was student reflection. So remember the collaborative planning piece, the reflection is for the teacher. So when it says curriculum document and FFT 5E's lesson, it'll say not found in the document. Okay? Because usually the reflection happens after. Okay? Now, is it? Yeah. All right, so what we have for you, have a question. Why did we have you go through this task? What's the purpose of this task? Use as a guide when you're planning your lessons. I'm sorry? To use as a guide when you're planning your lessons. Okay. Okay. 
Anything else? We have to do it first before we present it to our colleagues. Okay. <coughs> do you feel this activity be, will be clear? Clear any misconceptions that, that, that we may have had about what is where? Okay. All right. All right. As a PDLT, as a, as a PDLT trainer or the department chair or the ILT, when teachers come to you and they have to go through that cycle to write their 5E lesson plans and they're asking what this means, now you have some type of direction of where you can direct them to go in this whole process. So the purpose is for you to take this back, have your teachers go through this activity so it, the aha can go off for them. So now you have your cheat sheet of where you actually can find all of these components. Okay? Because a lot of times teachers have a hard time writing lesson plans because they don't know where to go. Or where to start. Or where to start. Okay? Uh, we need one more over there. Two more over Yes. Question. That's your answer sheet. Okay, question. Everything, um, everything that you have on your folder has already been loaded in the PPLT. Okay. So if you don't, if we're out of copies, because I inadvertently left it on that table, and I had enough of everything else. <laughs> question. So when we take this back to our building, is this... Similar, or should we set the page when we're doing this with our school with math and reading? Like, Yo, you should have a math. Well, our building has just two. So right, so one for math and one for reading. Is this very you, similar, or I'm not sure what they're doing with reading. I can't speak to that. Okay, but I know for secondary math, that's the collaborative plan too. We're using. Um, that, that's one you can use. I can't say that you have to use that one because you may have something else that's working in your building. But that's one. That's the one we shared with principal. And that's the one we have on our Google site. So when you do your training, this is the one we want you to use with your teachers because we want them to be able to identify how, where do I find it in that document? Because the document can be overwhelming if you're doing that all by yourself. Okay, so now you're giving me where do I go when I'm looking for these particular pieces. The FFT lesson, a lot of us have a lot of new teachers in our building, meaning they have to go through that process how many times? Four. Four times. So now they have a sheet and they've had the experience of identifying where do I find this in the document. Or, you know, I can go other places, but now I would have a clear understanding how to start that process. Okay, any other questions? So when I pass this off to her, I know she has to give a training for next Friday during her professional mm -hmm. development day. So you're suggesting this is what she should do with this? No, this, this is, is what she would do. do. Absolutely. Exactly. And I would, exactly. and I would suggest that she, if she's available to attend the, the TC next week, on she probably should do that. Yeah, yeah. Because she should yeah. get the information first. Okay? Yeah. And remember, which document are we using? When you train them next week, grade which eight. grade eight? Unit two. Unit two. So now it does not even matter what you're teaching because if I'm a seventh grade teacher, I still can experience this piece here, even though the focus is around using the eighth grade document. So whatever I do in that eighth grade document, I can take this information and apply it to that seventh grade document or the sixth grade document. So you, you, my understanding is that all math teachers. I'm supposed to be trained in the 27th. Right, I'm, I'm talking about the, the team homework. That we, the team that, the homework, but the team that we have to select, it would seem to make the most well, sense. Oh, you talking about for your homework? Yeah. What's your homework? Yeah. 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 You jump and what's your homework? We have to put together a team to facilitate right. a collaborative planning session. And if it's if the unit is going to be a math eight unit, it would seem to make the most sense to have that team be the ones that, that you actually math do your homework with. Right, absolutely, that, that makes sense. We will get, we'll get to that. We'll get to that, but that makes sense because I wouldn't have a seventh grade teacher. Yes. However, but this process, absolutely, and even though your homework is for eighth grade, 
if you are the PDLT, especially if you're the IOT, DT, or DC, whatever we call that submitted, I, I don't know what they are. PQRS, you know, yeah, yeah, oh, I love it. Whoever you are, you want to make sure the same process is happening in collaborative planning for seventh grade and sixth grade teachers as well.